What is happening, everybody? DC here with Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, smkw.com. Today, we've got another Blade Steel video for you. Uh, and we've been listening. We know you like our Blade Steel series. We really enjoy doing it um, because it's educational uh, for everyone involved. And we really, we really dig that. So um, I'm here talking about Blade Steel. Um, steel is something that I've known my entire life. And uh, this is something, uh, a, a wonderful part of the job that I really enjoy. So uh, before we get started, though, a little bit of housekeeping. We want you to like this video. If you like it, we want you to smash that thumbs up button. You got to hit it. Yeah, hit it and it'll light up. There. Yeah. And uh, we also want you to subscribe to our channel. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, and also ring that notification bell. So you'll know when new videos drop from us. That way you don't miss out on anything. We would hate for you to miss out on anything. Now, without further ado, let's light it up. Now today we're going to be talking about 52100 steel. And uh, we actually got this one requested in our comments a couple of different times. Uh, been intending to get around to it. Um, it's a little bit lesser known steel, and I'm guessing that's why uh, people are wanting to know more about it, and that's why we're doing it today. So 52100 is a relatively simple steel. Um, it's got 1% carbon and 1.5% chromium and small amounts of uh, manganese and silicon. So, uh, 52100 steel has been used at least since about 1905. And uh, it was originally developed for use in roller ball bearings. And uh, high carbon steels were actually primarily used until the late 1800s, uh, after which uh, chromium additions uh, to bearing steels were being made. And the reason being is they wanted something to make them a little less... Um, like a little more corrosion resistant. Um, so these early chromium alloy bearing steels were actually produced in Germany by Fitchel and Sachs and by Deutschwaffen und Munitionsfabrik. I hope I said that right. I'm not 100% sure. But French produced chromium steels were also being used in bearings um, around that time period as well. Now, originally, it wasn't called 52100. It was called like 5295, I believe it was, or 5285, somewhere around in there. Um, around 1919, the name of the steel changed. Um, so with it being around that long... Uh, it has certainly stood the test of time. Now, it has gone by a lot of other names. 100 CR6, um, 1.3505, that's going to be a uh, typically like a German uh, moniker, just like 14116. Um, GCR15 is another one. It's also been known and uh, by and called uh, SUJ2. Um, and like I said, it was originally called, I think, 5295, but... Uh, under the SAE designations, it eventually became 52100 around 1919. Um, now, the first person uh, that a lot of people think of uh, when it comes to 52100 using it in knives um, and making it popular as a knife steel in modern times was Ed Fowler. Um, and he has produced a ton of knives in 52100. And wrote a lot about its uses and virtues in uh, Blade Magazine and uh, Knife Talk columns and, and that kind of thing. Um, now, he was introduced uh, to 52100 in the form of ball bearings sent to him um, by someone, uh, Wayne Goddard. Wayne Goddard, that's who it was, uh, who was another knife maker. And the thing about uh, roller ball bearing steels is they were really easy to find as a scrap steel in scrap yards and such. Um, and so any of that stuff, just like 5160, uh, any type of spring steel, anything that makes a lot of scrap um, that, that you're going to find in a scrap yard ended up being tried for use in knives. And um, so as a result, 
its use in knives actually goes back a lot further. Um, we know of knives being produced in the 1940s in 5200, um, including some by William Skagel. Uh, so the obvious difference between 52100 and other high carbon steels uh, used by forging bladesmiths is its chromium content, uh, having one and a half percent chromium. And th- they added this for several different reasons. Um, one being quench speed. Um, the chromium addition uh, makes for better hardenability. So that's a measure of how fast the steel has to be quenched um, from its high temperature to achieve its full hardness. Uh, now, a simple carbon steel like 1095, for example, um, requires a very fast water quench to fully harden. Um, so, and what happens is at that point, a, uh, Martin site is formed and 1095 is nearly 1% carbon, just like 52100, but without the chromium content. Now, um, what this does and what the chromium content actually does is it creates carbides in the steel. Now, depending on how it's quenched and the quickness um, what that's going to do is it's going to make it a tougher steel. Now, with its low chromium content being around 1.5% chromium, um, relative to air hardening steels like uh, A2 or D2, uh, makes 52100 a really good choice for forging. Um, it makes it really easy to work. Um, and it doesn't have any carbides present at all at forging temperatures like the air hardening steels like A2 and D2, um, which means it moves a lot more easily under the hammer. It's a lot easier to actually forge. Now, another thing that this does is it makes 52100 more forgiving with slower quenches. And what that does is slower quenches actually reduce the risk of warping, blade warping. If you've ever watched an episode of Forged in Fire, um, I know you've heard that term before, and and that's that's actually what they're referring to. Now, a more hardenable steel like O1 um, are also very forgiving at uh, from that standpoint, um, but it also makes them difficult to anneal without a controlled temperature furnace. So that's going to make it a little more difficult in like a home forge scenario, annealing those. Those types of air hardening steels are also very difficult to normalize as they do harden when they are cooled in the air rather than forming um, the desired perlite in the uh, composition there. So, as a result of all this, 52100, um, the level of hard, hardenability uh, is, is a good compromise. It makes it um, very forgiving and very flexible, and I don't mean that in the sense of it actually bending and being flexible, but it makes it um, very easy to work from all standpoints. So, that's, that's going to make it easier across the board. Now, another really cool thing, a uh, little tidbit of information that I learned from Laren Thomas, and if you haven't had a chance to check out KnifeSteelNerds.com, definitely do that. Laren is a wealth of information when it comes to blade steels. But Ed Fowler also popularized triple quenching of 52100. Now, that's a process uh, in which the steel is uh, austenitized and quenched multiple times for grain refinement and improved toughness. Now, 52100 isn't particularly any more well-suited for triple quenching than other low-alloy steels, but it's often connected with that because of Ed Fowler's experience with that. Now, there have been quite a few studies on 52100, but it's kind of difficult to find some actual um, real-world comparisons of its toughness uh, in, relative to other steels. Um, most other studies have focused on just 52100 itself. Now, the edge retention of 52100 is not super high um, compared to other carbon and low alloy steels, um, but it has a much higher wear resistance. Um, in a lot of different tests, uh, it had better edge retention than like 1086 and Woots Damascus. 
but not quite as good as ones like ABL. Um, 1086 is a lower carbon steel um, with lower carbides, and ABL has a has harder chromium carbide. So that kind of result, you know, makes sense in testing. Now, in rope cutting test, 52100 was found to have similar slicing edge retention to other 60 Rockwell steels, um, which is right about where it falls in the, uh, in the hardness level, um, if it's properly heat treated, of course. So, 52100 is a relatively old blade steel. Um, like I said before, originally introduced for rollerball bearings um, in the early 1900s, first developed in uh, the early 1900s, and first used and patented in 1905. Um, now, it's been used in a ton of knives, mainly because of its, uh, its properties. It's, it's very easy to forge. It's very forgiving, um, but also because of its, how easy it is to find. Um, it being a good scrap steel. So um, the chromium addition to it improves that hardenability um, and decreases the carbide size just a little bit to make it a little bit tougher. And um, it also means that it requires higher temperatures for austenitizing. So um, it has a greater volume of carbide relative to simple carbon steel. Um, which makes it have better wear resistance. Um, but the combination of the reduced carbide size because of the chromium addition um, and the increased carbide volume uh, gives it a good combination of toughness and wear resistance. Um, and that's why it has been a very reliable blade steel overall. So I guess in the end, is 52100 a great blade steel? Absolutely it is. Is it for you? I don't know. That's up to you to decide. Now, we do have some knives in 52100, and these are some classics too. So uh, the ones that most people are going to think of and uh, remember and uh, that's going to come to mind when it comes to 52100 is going to be Cold Steel's Drop Forge series. Now, this one in particular is the Drop Forge Hunter, and uh, I really, really dig this thing. Um, that is an absolutely awesome knife. It is a full tang, no handle material, just beefy chunk of 52100 steel right there. Um, comes in a great sheath and super affordable too. You're going to find the link in the description below to all of our 52100 steels. That's another thing. And we might end up uh, at some point doing a tour of our website, how everything works, and how you can search through all the different uh, blade materials, blade shapes, blade sizes on our website to make that a little bit easier. But is 52100 a great blade steel? Absolutely it is. Is it for you? I don't know. That's for you to decide. Let us know in the comments down below what blade steel you want to hear more about. We are actively looking for more blade steels to do videos on, and we want to know what you want to hear about. Um, so we are ready for that. Let us know in the comments down below. Folks, as always, it's been me, TC, here with Smoky Mountain Knifeworks. And remember, if it cuts like 52100, then we carry it. Breaking that wall. So lost with that. <laughs> it's gonna look so big in these hands. <laughs> wow. <laughs>